These are five of the greatest Joe Rogan theories, starting with number five. There's oh. a, you know, there's a crazy conspiracy theory connected to the, the shining moon, and the moon landing. Yeah, I heard yeah. about the moon landing. Yeah, it's, it's all about the number on the door is the exact same amount of thousands of miles, 237, and it's 237,000 miles away. I heard but it also, that, but by I, the way, it, it varies. See, that's I, the problem with that argument, is that like the, the, the distance between the Earth and the moon is not constant. I think it, it moves a little bit. So I think it goes as far as 265,000 feet out, if I'm, if I'm, or miles round, rather, 265,000 miles out, and it, it goes to 237. But I think it varies. I think it goes like this. I think it has like an elliptical orbit around the Earth a little bit. I maybe, heard... maybe I made that up. So wait, <laughs> do you think Epstein and Clinton were friends or something? <laughs> I don't. This artist made it. I don't know. That's well, fucked I up, flew dude. with him 26 times. <laughs> yeah. It was only good. 26 times. He was a good man. The mischaracterizing him. Clinton. He had a love of science. Clinton, Clinton seems like a fun ruled. guy, yeah. yeah. I love the picture of Clinton, the both Clintons, and and Trump hanging out. How about fucking Jazane at their wedding? Gis oh, no. You Wait, gotta get her on here. You gotta get Jazane on. True. She's in the jail. Right after the mistrial. She is? Yeah, she's in jail. She's oh. innocent. They're letting her off. Do you think so? Yeah, because those two guys was like... Uh, Do you think they engineered it? possible uh, yo for real though i know we're not supposed to joke about like child trafficking and stuff but that's a good side that's a good it's a bottom good gig. bitch just oh. laying down imagine that was your lady like yo we need to secure some young chicks down. and your girlfriend being like okay theory that many people have is that death opens up a chemical gateway in the mind and that chemical gateway takes whatever the soul is, whatever consciousness is, and transports it into this new realm. It allows you, your conscious mind, to access this new realm, which is available to you upon death. And so a lot of the ancient cultures that did ayahuasca and, all, and, and mushrooms, they would talk about this realm as being like a well of souls that you encounter disembodied life forms, disembodied spirits. And this has been, it's been a staple of so many religions. There's so many religions that talk about the afterlife. I mean, I get that you would want to come up with something like that just because you wanted to have some sort of a reason to keep going with the rational mind when you're dealing with this existential angst of a temporary existence and one day you're just going to be worm food what's the point of it all why don't i end it now yeah. it's too much life is to live is to suffer no there's something waiting for you when it died yeah i mean not really we don't know right that, that's the that's I mean, this isn't like ancient aliens this is we they declassified a bunch of documents um they both the israelis um the british and the germans and americans in the past 20 years have been de consistently declassifying documents and there were a bunch of specifically fbi documents that we were spending millions and millions of dollars actively searching for hitler after the war as was really yeah like millions of dollars like Hoover was like, no, 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 send more FBI agents to South America, um, to North Africa, go to the Canary Islands, go to Spain, trying to find out where this guy went. The Russians got the body and they got his skull. Um, and when they brought it back to Moscow, nobody has ever been able to independently verify who and what this body is. They let one genetic test occur and the body with the bullet holes that they said was Hitler and have said, and that's the narrative, that's the story, that's the, all the eyewitness accounts that are in, even in the vicinity of co co collaborating with each other um, and cooperating each other's testimony. Like the closest version, because none of it seems to be very accurate, is that, okay, here's Hitler's skull and when they did the genetic testing, it's that of a 35-year-old woman. So they're like, oh, well, this isn't Hitler. So what you had in South America, both Chile and Argentina back-to-back -back had fascist regime, regimes. You had uh, Perón, who was part of the Nazi party starting all the way back into the mid-30s. He's the president of Argentina. So the Red Cross, there was about three different rat lines that guys were able to successfully get out of Europe into South America. Um, and these are, there's no question that we're talking 
thousands, if not tens of thousands of high ranking Nazis made it there. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. And I'm not talking like little soldiers. I'm talking high ranking Nazis. But what you got in South America were isolated German only communities. You could go into Bariloche, Argentina, and you know, I'd be like, Buenos dias, amigos. And they're like, Guten Morgen? I'm like, oh. Yeah, I, 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 I meant good morning. Yeah, sorry. It's 2017, right? I thought we spoke Spanish here. So in 2017, you were there and they were speaking German. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I don't look very... I might look more European than right. I do. So it's just them seeing me walking down the street and be like... Wow. Yeah. And there's tons of communities. I mean, if you go to Colonia Dignidad, which is now called Via Bavaria, it is uh, only German. Whoa. In the center of Chile, in the mountains of Chile. Like, you, there's no Spanish being, being spoken there. It is exclusively German. And these are the descendants of Nazis. Powerful Nazis. Holy shit. Are there any legitimate eyewitness accounts of Hitler in South America? Yeah, absolutely, potentially. Whoa. Yep, I, eyewitness accounts. I saw him get off a boat. I saw him meet here. And if it was just some person saying it, it's almost meaningless. Right. But if you look at the context of who this person is, the wealth that they have that they shouldn't have. Like, can, can you explain how you got so rich in two generations? You know, like, okay, your grandpa got here from Germany in 1946. That's weird. Um, and and he, he, he's on a, a legitimate visa with an Argentinian passport. Also weird. Um, and now he's a war refugee that's now worth millions of dollars. How, how does this of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps, because we didn't discover it until 1820. And yet it's on maps drawn in the 1500s with great detail, which again were based on much older source maps that have now been lost to us. Um, astonishing thing is the, the so-called Pinkerton world map. I don't know if you can, if you can find it, Jamie. Uh, drawn, I think, in 1813 or 1818, based on the latest exploration data at that time. And where Antarctica is, Antarctica is, yeah, that one, keep going right, it just shows a hole where Antarctica is. Because mm. it was an honest map. Nobody right. had found it by then. But if you go back to, for example, the Walsy Wooler world map drawn in 1530 or thereabouts, you find Antarctica is present. That map shows, shows Antarctica exactly where it should be. And it shows it, there we go, Antarctica, at the tip of South America, mm -hmm. just south of South Africa. And what did they call it back then? Well, they call it the Southern Land. Um, and, it's, and it's larger than it is today, but it was larger than it is today during the Ice Age. Antarctica was a much bigger... Now, what the fuck is it doing on a map drawn in the 1500s, which we know was based on older source maps when nobody knew it existed in the 1500s? To me, the obvious answer is we are dealing with the fingerprints of a lost civilization that mapped the world and that left evidence of that mapping, which ancient map makers found and used and incorporated into their maps. These maps can be very confusing because they were trying to mix exploration data from their own period with data from the older maps. But when you look at these maps in depth, they're very, very 